Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about why a Linux server is better than a Windows server. And this isn't a white and black kind of rule, this is a gray area. So depending on what your needs are, you're going to have different reasons for each. But here are some of the cons, I think, of a Windows server. First of all, licensing. You need a license for every desktop, you need a license for every server, a couple hundred dollars for each desktop, a couple thousand for each server. Uh, then you also need to think about all the uh, proprietary software you need to run on there. So Adobe Dreamweaver, of course most offices they use um, they use Acrobat Pro just to mod it, uh, modify PDFs even though there's free stuff available. They, everything they do is you know everything they do is commercial they don't buy anything that's open source nothing that's free if you suggest a free product to them their instant response is gonna go well does it work so you know you have a lot of things to consider if you're going to choose a Windows server now we get into some more stuff there's also the cost besides you know a couple thousand dollars for each server and you may have more servers than just one you may have four or five in a lot of small organizations I've seen that easily um, and each one of them needs you know a couple thousand dollar um, you, uh, license to run the, the server OS or a couple hundred dollars in the case of a desktop OS and you might be getting a deal on the desktop OS if you have a volume license or something like that or you're going through different outlets like TechSoup um, but in general that costs a lot more money and then of course the cost of office and everything then we get into other things to do with the server side like CALS, client access licenses so for each person that you want to connect to the Windows server or use stuff on the Windows server or be a member of the domain you need to have a client access license. So usually I think they're about 50 or $60. I don't, I'm don't. i not in charge of licensing at work, but um, I, it, I believe that is correct. It's about 50 or $60 per Cal per user who wants to connect to it. Then if they want to use a terminal server, they need a Cal for that. If they want to use a Hyper-V VM, they need a Cal for that, I believe. Um, and then I believe even if they use Exchange, they need a Cal for that. Then they need a couple thousand dollar license just to run Exchange. Um, so you start to see that it's quite expensive if you go the way of Microsoft. Uh, although you do get support, which is something you don't get with Linux unless you're buying a Linux server, in which case you're kind of defeating the purpose of going with Linux if you're going and purchasing something. So there's that. Another con of Windows Server, as well as with Windows Desktop, is they both get viruses and malware. And of course, Linux desktops get viruses. I think they said there was 50 known found viruses for Windows, or for Linux. Um, actual viruses, there's lots of other malware and spyware up in the thousands. But just viruses, there's less than like, I think, like 100. I think they quoted me at 50 at one point. And from what I understand, each kernel update, a lot of those viruses are benign. They don't work anymore. Um, so you really start to see how secure Linux is. And also Linux is, has a lot of built-in things that keep the operating system secure, like SE Linux or Security Enhanced Linux, or in the case of distros like Ubuntu, they have App Armor and SC Linux disabled. And so you get to see that there's, like, it's a lot more secure. Um, and of course there's cons with Linux too. Um, but, you know, so some of the cons besides that are also with Windows Server, things tend to eat up a lot more resources, uh, not just on the desktops and the servers themselves, but also on the network. Um, if you're remoting into a desktop and it's a lot more graphical than, let's say, a Linux box would be, um, you're going to eat up a lot more resources. Of course, there's the Linux distributions out there that are a lot more uh, graphic, graphically um, vibrant and, and, and to have transparency and stuff like that too but for the most part people tend not to use those in a work working environment <clears throat> things like unity and kde come to mind um, so yeah there's both on both sides but generally windows is a lot more you know balls to the wall in terms of graphics so it, it causes a lot more network congestion as well so there's again there's a lot to consider if you're going to go with if you're going to go with linux so i really suggest um, you know, Linux for a lot of different environments, reasons, and purposes. It's, they're like tools. You don't always use the same tool to do the same job. I mean, you wouldn't cut, you know, a piece of broccoli with a spoon. Or maybe you would in a pinch, but you, you would try not to do something like that. And the same thing goes. I mean, if you're, if you're going to give, you know, um, 
a really nice gaming machine to, to a little kid. It doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're going to give a really fast, simple Linux desktop to somebody who just wants to edit photos, I think that's a better choice. You know, or, or but maybe they have a need to go with, with closed source products. I'll also be doing a reasons as to why I think Windows is better than Linux. And I'll probably have a lot more reasons in that video because I am a Windows fan, to be honest. I love Linux too. I use Linux for a lot of stuff too. But there is a lot of reasons that I would choose Linux over Windows in a heartbeat, nonetheless. Um, like a small shop or something like that. So to finish off the cons of each, I think I think uh, Windows has a lot of cons for it that are a lot bigger of problems like price, cost of ownership. Another con with Windows is if something in the operating system or desktop OS needs to be changed, you, you can change it with Linux. In Windows you can't because the, it's closed source. You can't edit the source code. Of course you can still code applications for Windows or Linux, but you can't change the way Windows works without hacking it. You can't go in and change the source code like you can with Linux. So if you're doing anything with machinery or um, scientific equipment or anything like that, I would definitely probably go for um, for a Linux distribution because we can always change or hire someone in to change what we need to change to get the job done. So that's pretty much all the cons I can think of at the moment for Windows. There's probably a lot more, um, you know. But uh, now we get into the cons of Linux. So some of the cons of Linux is that it's not going to run on every piece of hardware, which isn't so much a problem in a big environment because if you're going to roll out 100 PCs um, versus you're going to roll out 1,000 PCs for an enterprise and you're putting on Linux on them, you're going to test the one and Linux is probably going to work on all of them. But you're not going to test every single application. Whereas if you have Windows, every single application has been tested on each of those platforms. So it's one thing to be like, oh, I'm a Linux user. I would never, I would never use Windows Server. I'm just going to throw in a Linux server in there. And yeah, a lot of the times that li that Linux guy is right. That's going to be a lot better choice than a Windows Server for that company. But when you're designing enterprises of thousands of thousands of workstations and hundreds of servers, and you can't afford for that organization to go down for one moment. And if they go down for one moment, you need to be able to pass the buck of shame and pass the buck of figuring out what's going on. And that's where sort of the case of Microsoft comes in. Microsoft is a much better choice, in my opinion, for an enterprise. If you have an enterprise where it's just science and the sciences go down, it's not a big deal, that's one thing. But if you have any kind of company paying them to get something done, uh, paying them to do a service or a system, you, by the time you get your system up in Linux, your clients might be gone, and your whole po point of your job is totally benign and useless at that point. So, but if you have a small shop, going balls to the wall and buying a $2,000 server makes absolutely no sense. It's completely asinine to go out and buy a Windows server. For the sake of um, file services, um, you know, stuff like that, uh, people controlling user accounts, doing simple stuff like that. A Windows server, a Linux server can do a lot of that kind of stuff at way under the cost. And you can still build them as if it was a Windows server and eat a lot of that cost. Because it doesn't matter to them. If you're providing them with the same level of service as the Windows tech, it's the same thing. So there's a lot of reasons to grab Linux though. Like let's say if you need something really secure. You know, there was a, a case back, even with all that stuff I spouted about enterprise, There's that's not always the case. If I ran an enterprise of uh, nuclear power plants, I would not choose Windows Server. There's a case in point, there was a story where some, uh, they said it was Russians in the paper to make it more scarier, but there was some Ukrainians, the actual story was, uh, that got a job in a nuclear power plant, uploaded some spyware, and essentially shut off the power for a huge portion of North America up near where I live in Canada. And also it happened part of the United States around Detroit because that power grid's quite big. And so in those kind of cases, a nuclear power plant, a military-based Linux is obviously the case, even in an enterprise. Because in an enterprise, if the stuff goes down, well, the military is not going to lose money. The military might not be as functional, but they're not going to lose their contract. I mean, <laughs> they're pretty much there no matter what. So there's a lot of reasons that you might want to choose. Or if you were just researching, if you were just crunching numbers, Linux can crunch numbers way better than Windows can. Again, another reason to use Linux. Um, 
but yeah, for just a small shop or something like that, where there's you know five or twenty or maybe even just under a hundred users, Linux might be a great choice. Uh, Asterix phone system, that's another great choice. A lot of phone systems to begin with are built on Linux and Unix-based operating systems such as OpenBSD, uh, FreeBSD, NetBSD, and such. Um, you know, so there's there's a lot of reasons for both. But I think it's really important to understand a lot of the reasons why a Linux server is a much better choice than a Windows server. Um, maybe you don't want people to be able to get inside your network, or maybe you want it to be harder for people to get inside your network. You know, if you're dealing with Linux, you have a lot more chance, a lot, lot less chance that someone's going to know what the OS is. But then again, if you're a hacker, you're going to know it, how Linux works anyway, usually. Um, one of the cons, again, about Linux server is if you have a Linux server, and this is a big one, uh, you need to make sure that your staff know Linux server. Not a lot of people know Linux server, and so you force yourself to actually have to pay, which is a good thing, uh, your workers more money, because people, generally, people don't want to stay at a company that pays them low wages, and if a company needs to keep the workers they have, they are forced to pay them a little bit more money. Uh, but that's not always the case. I, you know, a lot of Linux-based uh, web hosting companies, they don't pay their workers very much. They treat them like shit. Um, but then again, to me, uh, sorry if you work web hosting, but that's kind of an entry-level job. You know, you're, you're not there forever. You're there to get some experience and move on to bigger and better things. Um, you know, like crunching numbers at a scientific lab for Linux, for instance. But that's basically my reasons why I think that Linux, in a lot of cases, is better than a Windows server. Stay tuned for my Why Windows is Better Than Linux uh, video in a short while.